Greetings, and welcome to episode 33. Today's episode is going to expand on Thursday's episode of Side Notes, which would be uh, escapism. I figured at the end of that video I still had more to say, so we're going to put it in a whole video on its own. So, and also, I didn't make a video for Friday because I had to take my daughter to a school function, which was to watch a movie that she didn't watch because she sat around socializing the whole time, so we left early. <laughs> anyway, this is Friday's episode, done on Saturday. Just making sure you're getting all the content. Alright, so if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, escapism. Escapism can be defined as any method you use to anesthetize, I can't even say it, anesthetize, to feel better about being on Earth. So it doesn't hurt so much. Uh, it could be anything. It could be reading, playing video games, drinking, doing drugs. Uh, hiking, biking, anything you do to take your mind off of being here on Earth. Pardon me, I'm shifting the camera a bit. Haha, -ha. better. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I'm really just expanding on a video I made Thursday, my side notes video. Uh, and I didn't have a topic, so I talked about escapism my favorite form of escapism which is video games and reading I just don't have any of my books here <coughs> excuse me and uh, yeah I've been uh, studying things for a very long time and the Egyptians believed that every day you spend in this realm should be a bad day because this is hell. This is the lowest level a creature can achieve is what we're experiencing on Earth on a daily basis. And I believe that. That's why it seems like everything goes wrong. Like the focus is on fear. I don't think it's simply because that's what they want. Or else it wouldn't be so easy to turn you towards fear. I think the closer to the bottom you get, Oh, excuse me, the more attracted to fear and negativity one becomes. And I think the higher up Jacob's ladder you go, the less a soul or spirit associates with fear and negativity. And we will do whatever it takes to not have to really experience how bad it sucks to be here because let's face it even if there wasn't bills and taxes we'd still have to work we'd still be farmers we'd still be uh, carpenters we'd still have to work long days to to make sure life or what we consider to be life is maintained and not everybody enjoys farming. Not everybody enjoys construction work. And let's face it, those would be the only things available if society were not the way it is. You'd have people that travel around trading, and you would uh, you'd have skilled trades like carpentry, uh, possibly uh, what would you call it, gunsmiths and the like. You know, people that make crafts or things of utility. But it still work. You'd still be doing it every day for the rest of your life. And it's that type of mindset that leads people to believe, you know what? It'd be easier if I just go out and take it from others. And so the cycle would just continue. Because you're always going to find those that refuse to be stuck into a way of life that they don't like for their entire life which is where you get crime now people decide I'm not gonna work it's easier to take it from you or I'm not gonna work it's easier to sell you 
the things that help you feel better about your shitty life. <laughs> so technically, all forms of consumerism is technically drug dealing. Because everything, everything you purchase is geared toward making you feel better. Whether it's marijuana, heroin, a TV, a car, it's all geared toward making you feel better. Escapism. And I, I got lucky. My escapism is relatively cheap compared to some people's escapism. Some people have to be out spending money constantly on a daily basis to feel better about themselves, to feel better about being on earth. And that can get expensive. So can uh, drinking. So can drugs. So I got off relatively easy. I have a relatively cheap form of escapism. Because even if, even if it was solely just reading, it takes at least a couple of days to read a book. Given that you have other shit to do. <laughs> if not, you could read a book in a day and then your habit would get expensive. But like I said, escapism is escapism. You can't judge one over the other. If you indulge in any form of escapism, I don't, I don't say that one form is better than another. Likewise, I won't judge a person for their method of escapism because I can't say anything. Some people say, oh yeah, I'm an alcoholic or uh, I'm a drug addict. Well, I'm a video game addict. That's what I would rather be doing than most forms of escapism reading or playing video games because you have it's it's an addiction no matter how you slice it i don't watch television some people are addicted to that they can't live they i i, I mean i used to do it plan you don't plan your shows around your life we would plan our life around our shows and it just was like whoa really are we really not going to go do this thing because this particular show is on or is going to come on while we're gone <laughs> you know and we would and it just it just started to take its toll on top of that you have the commercials and see for me it was the show itself, but for my children, it's the commercials. And every time a commercial would come on, they I just got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. And that's where, that's where they hit the kids the hardest is in the commercials because that's when you teach them that buying stuff feels good, having stuff feels good. And so seeing the effect television was having on my family, I decided that, and the, the low, low quality television shows that were coming out, uh, reality TV, uh, some of the, and some of the best shows that were coming out, you never even heard, you never hear about them until, oh, they got canceled. It ran for a month and got canceled. Why? Because it was a really good show and it was really down to earth and didn't promote anything. It was just a good show. <laughs> Still escapism, but. Yeah, you know, and that when you find out the quality shows aren't there anymore. And even the quality shows, as my wife pointed out, was the same damn thing over and over and over. <laughs> I I decided, you know, it's no real point in it. And even she stopped watching TV. She stopped even going to Netflix because she was like, eh, it's the same thing over and over so really what you're watching you're only watching to see your favorite actor on the screen or your favorite actress on the screen that's really all you're watching for and I can say that when I play video games it doesn't that it doesn't happen that way now you can get trapped into this running the same parts of the game over and over and over and over again and seeing how you take care of that is you switch characters because, yeah, you're running the same part of the game over and over again, but you're doing it, you have to change your tactics, which means it's different. Because this character has different abilities than this one, whereas this one could just run in and, and just start fighting. This one has to be more tactical and careful because of the way their abilities work. And I appreciate that. And... Yeah, she used to appreciate that, but the game we used to play, it became really lame, so we stopped playing it. 
But me, I'm still a gamer, and I still look for really good games, and I still play really good games. But uh, I do it alone now. <laughs> it's okay, though. Because I'm going to find a game that's really so kick-ass that she can't resist it. And we'll play games. <laughs> She's over there chuckling. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> yeah. I mean, you can't deny it. She says she used to get mad at me when, when, I, when I used to watch TV. We haven't watched TV in like five or six years. Literally five or six years. Probably even longer than that. And uh, she used to get so mad because I'd be watching TV and she'd be like, Chris, Chris, bad, bad. <laughs> and I wouldn't hear her. And she called it TV face. Actually, I called it TV face. Sorry, that's my TV face. And I just zone out and I'm in the TV. I'm watching TV. And uh, she used to get so mad. But then when she reads a book, yeah, same thing, same thing. When she reads a book, she's in the book. She might as well become words. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she gets book face. <laughs> Most of the people I know get it. My daughter gets book face. What? I didn't hear you. I've been calling you for 20 minutes. <laughs> so that's a laugh. <laughs> so uh, just the fact that you're so distracted from the real world that you can't hear someone talking to you that's standing right next to you that's escapism <laughs> at least when you're drunk or on drugs you can hear them you just choose not to acknowledge them <laughs> and don't get me wrong I used to do my share of drugs and uh, matter of fact I was drinking just last night but I don't really drink for escapism I drink because I just don't want to feel sober right now, you know? And it's not really escapism so much as, oh, got to let off some steam. And you really, unless you meditate, you really, you're not letting off that, that, that steam you need to let off. And add to the fact that drink and you know how to meditate, you're really just, bleh. you're cat mellow. You know how a cat can lay in almost any shape or form? Yeah, you're that mellow. Just, bleh. You don't even need yoga at that point. <laughs> Take a couple shots of whiskey. Now meditate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not condoning drinking among the underage. But for those of us that are adults, yeah, try it. A couple of shots of whiskey. Now meditate. You'll just melt into a puddle of relaxation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Same thing works with marijuana, but I don't smoke because I'd lose my CDL. That is to say, commercial driver's license. Uh, but I like, well, it's not so much that I like, I find it amusing that when I tell people that I don't watch TV, and I say, I don't watch TV, and they still say, but do you watch sports? No, that's part of the reason why I don't watch TV. Because I know it's fixed. <laughs> and uh, they freak out. What do you do then? I play video games. Well, that's just going to melt your brain. No, 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 no. Not if you're looking at it properly. When you watch TV or you're watching sports, other than yelling at the screen, you have absolutely no interaction with that media, with that medium, with that with what you're doing. When I'm playing video games, there's a story involved that you're part of. You make all of the, the decisions of your character. You progress the story as you see fit, as fast or as slow as you see fit. And sometimes it's your job to go and find the lore, which is to find the story. And I'm a lore chaser. I'll, I'll chase the lore. Because sometimes the best part of a game is the story. Sometimes it's the graphics. But even that presents its own unique beauty. Because it is. It's art. 
any gamer will tell you that a well-designed game, d designing, like I said in the, the side notes, designing the game is an art within itself because somebody had to design the art of the game and ac actually had to sit and draw it out. And then somebody else had to take that artwork and you can find the artwork, pre-game artwork. Somebody had to take that artwork and make a three-dimensional model out of it and, and bring that artist's vision into the game. And like I said, uh, some of these worlds that they design are so stunningly beautiful, stunningly realistic, that you can't describe it as anything but art. They're just that gorgeous. So I get... In my in in my escapism, I get story storytelling, usually top notch storytelling. I get art. <clears throat> I get interaction. I get to make decisions, and a lot of times it's I'm using uh, my abstract decision making skills function. In other words, I you can't think along linear lines. You have to actually solve the problem. You can't just walk in and shoot them up or or walk in and not do anything. Sometimes it's a puzzle. Sometimes it's sometimes the puzzle is figuring out how do I get through this moment with my firearms. Oh, you're pro promoting violence. I don't see it as any more violent than most TV shows. And I I refuse to use video games or even television as an excuse as to why people are so violent in the world today. That is not why people are violent. People are violent because humans are inherently violent and they're not doing anything to curb that part of themselves. I am not a pacifist by any means, but I know how to keep myself from being violent. And I'm not going to run around and make excuses. Oh, you know, I was violent because I played video games. No, I was violent because I was violent. And I played video games. Not all the video games I have are violent. Some of them are puzzle games, like I said. Then where's your excuse? I was playing Tetris, and I had to whoop his ass. No, see, how you, where's your excuse on that? <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Twister. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> These things are cop-outs. And uh, people are trying to get out of placing the blame squarely where it belongs, which is on the person causing the difficulties, being violent in the real world instead of, I mean, if you want to be that violent, video games to me, that's therapy. You had a bad day at work, your boss chewed your ass, you get in your video game, and every bad guy now has your boss's face. Oh, I feel better now. <sighs> therapy, brother. <laughs> and sister. <laughs> oh... But yeah, I can look at you, and I'm, yeah, and yeah, I'm still deeply spiritual. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you, be careful of the escapism you choose. I'm going to tell you, you're human. You weren't put here to be perfect. And I welcome the day when we don't need such distractions, or even want such, such distractions. But until that day comes, I'm going to enjoy my distractions. I'm not going to take them for granted, and then one day say, you know, I would have been nice to try doing X thing or Y thing. I'm going to try the things I like. And for those of you that are past any form of escapism, because even meditation can be seen as a form of escapism, you're going to the higher realms. Why do you need to go to the higher realms other than to escape this one? It's still escapism. I say the fact that you realize you don't want to be here, that's a plus 10 to begin with. According to the Egyptians, you're not supposed to want to be here. 
So if you're finding a route to, to escape this place, even if it's just for a few minutes or a few hours a day, you're actually doing it right. Now, what you choose to do to escape it might not be right. I would say that the only valid form of escapism really is meditation. But what if you don't know how to meditate? If you're really awesome at video games, or if you know how to fall into a book, or if you can fall into a TV show and block out everything else, then you know how to meditate. You're doing it while you're doing those things. You just don't realize it. You just need to learn how to sit there, remove the distraction, and still maintain that, that meditative state. People don't realize the bulk of the, the adventure is on the inside. It's your imagination. They say, clear your mind. But then everybody comes back with these wild stories of their spirit adventure. That tells me that the spirit was up to something. The mind was up to something. You just relinquish control of that. Instead of being the person controlling the video game, there's a greater mind controlling your video game in here. Instead of being the main character, suddenly you are the video game and someone else is playing it and you get to hear these wonderful stories about oh and it took me here and it took me there it took me there whereas in the 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 the, the video game you take it there so if all of these things are designed i'd say the only things that aren't designed to simulate meditation would be spending money and spending money for some people gets them into that euphoric ecstatic state but again they don't realize it but it hits their joy boom and they're there and that's probably why they keep wanting to get there and the only way to get there is to keep buying more and more or bigger and bigger or more expensive and more expensive because that's just the way th certain things go. If you get off on spending five bucks, eventually spending that five bucks isn't going to be enough. You're going to want to spend ten bucks and twenty bucks and forty bucks. After a while, a thousand bucks isn't going to be enough to spend to get that euphoric feeling. Oh! Some people are addicted to guilt and they'll go spend money for the buyer's remorse. And then they'll take it back. They didn't want to buy the thing. They wanted to feel that guilt. Some pe what people don't realize is people just want to feel. And you notice how things have to be more and more intense? It's because we're becoming numb due to our escapism. We're becoming more and more numb emotionally and mentally to certain stimuli. The trees and flowers don't cut it anymore. Why? Because they were way more stunning and beautiful on that TV show because of high definition TV. Because the, the, the production quality of that show was just so awesome that I've never seen a sunset that beautiful. So now the real sunset just doesn't cut it anymore. Or reading a book and having that sunset explained is more beautiful than actually going outside and watching the sunset. Or seeing the landscape in that video game is just so stunning that seeing the landscape in real life is no longer food for the brain. It's no longer beautiful to you. So these forms of escapism, they, they numb us due to sensory overload, overstimulation. But, in my opinion, all these forms of escapism, they really just simulate meditation. They simulate sleep. So meditation is a form of wakeful sleep. That's what I've learned through meditation, is meditation is a form of wakeful sleep, only you control where it goes, to an extent. You, can, you control the frequency at which you meditate where you go since the whole point is to silence the mind where you go is 
up to you as it concerns your mindset, but you're at the whims of the greater mind. Perhaps the greater mind has something to show you or something to tell you, and you're going to go there because that's just the way it works. Have you ever tried to control your meditation? Control where you go within your meditation? Because if you have, you've defeated the purpose of meditating, which is to free your mind and relinquish control. And it's that one time of the day you get to trust in the universe. Drop your guard, so to speak. Live unafraid. That's why the adventure's on the inside. People say, well, how can you just sit at home all the time? Because I don't lack for adventure. I just, I don't. Because the adventure's on the inside. Making a better me than, I, than there was a few minutes ago. That, to me, is an adventure. Making a better me than there was a day ago. That, to me, is the adventure. Making a better me than there was a year ago. That, it, there is no greater adventure. Constantly keeping track of what I'm doing, making sure that I'm being genuine, making sure that it's me in every moment. That's the adventure. People spend so much tr time talking schmack about other people's lives and trying to control other people's lives, but their lives are in shambles. It stands to reason. It's, it's just it's foolishness. Unless your car is tip running tip top, you don't get to come over and criticize my car. Especially if you saw my car. <laughs> and this is figuratively speaking. My car, if you could see my car, yeah. I put in a lot of work and a lot of effort on my car. And like I said, this is figuratively speaking. How much work did you put in on your car? <laughs> and my car is still not the best it could be. It is the best I have achieved thus far. And it improves, I would like to say on a daily basis, but it improves periodically. So don't, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you enjoy any form of escapism, whether it be meditation, television, video games, any form of drug, if you indulge in any form of escapism, you cannot judge any other form of escapism. And if you think meditation is not a form of escapism, then why are you not meditating on life down here? Why are you meditating on higher realms? Why do you feel uh, the necessity to leave this realm? To leave reality as we know it? You're escaping. And you're using meditation to do it. Whereas she uses books to do it. I use video games. They use television. Some people just use music. And it is my belief that all of these things were designed to s simulate meditation. <clears throat> and I can't even say designed to simulate meditation. They just do. And people don't associate it. Because when you're there, you're there. It, it, well, I don't get that much into video games. No, but you might get that much into TV. Or you might get that much into reading. Or you might get that much into meditation. Or you might get that much into whatever it is you're doing to realize your escape. Your moment of not here. <coughs> and see, when I meditate, I meditate on what's here. Because... If when you meditate, you're not really going anywhere, you're experiencing here, but at a higher vibration, at a higher realm, you can experience that here, that higher realm, as if that higher realm was down here with you, which puts this realm that you, we exist in down even further. 
when I meditate <clears throat> and I do so successfully I'm sitting on a stone macabre that's spinning it's made out of rose granite the same kind of granite that is built into the pyramids and it's just a stone macabre with its counter rotating pyramids and I'm sitting not inside of it but on top of it when I hit my successful meditation but I'm still here just everything has a beautiful orange I say yellow orange glow to it and you know you're not in that mundane everyday frequency And people might scoff, why a stone Merkaba? Because that's what I chose. That's what I chose. I didn't choose to have a light Merkaba because I, to me, oh, excuse me, the stone Merkaba represents being grounded in, what do I want to say? I'm trying to be more pragmatic, feet on the ground head in the clouds and that it to, that is symbolized by the stone macabre that I am that we can achieve those higher realms right here that's what it's telling me and the fact that the first time the stone macabre appeared it wasn't my choice tells me that I'm doing something right or maybe I'm not Maybe I just got far enough along to manifest a uh, stone Merkaba as opposed to a light Merkaba. I can do both, but the light Merkaba takes effort. The stone Merkaba just appeared, boom, and I was sitting on top of it and I was like, this is so very cool. <laughs> and, and when it appears, it lifts up. It not just me, but everything to a higher frequency. And I'm okay with that. If that's as far as I've come, is that if that's all I've earned, I can live with that. But meditation. I try to meditate before every time I make an episode. I didn't so much this time, but I've been trying to maintain a meditation through the episode. Usually like incense and it's all a spiritual spiritual thing, but I was actually concerned. I felt bad for not making a video yesterday, so I was kind of in a hurry because we kind of have plans today. We've got to go to a birthday party. And yeah, so... I didn't get into my meditative state before I started the video. But I've been trying to be in one since I got here to the to the to the video. But yeah, I'm it's it's still escapism. I'm still trying to not be here. Reading, you're trying to not be here. Video games, television, you name it, you're trying to not be here. Music takes you someplace. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah and I had to stop and restart the video because someone came in the door and I didn't feel like editing so I stopped the video and restarted it and uh, I'm not sure if we're to or past the 30 minute mark <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and shut this video down now uh, I hope you enjoyed it it was something that a friend actually brought up to me about escapism and being in reality but yeah they scoffed at my method of escapism <laughs> while in the same sentence telling me their method of escapism and we got a good chuckle out of it it was kind of funny the, the exchange we had about escapism <laughs> but it just made me realize that there's really no difference in if you 
choose a form of escapism, it's still escapism. Even meditation is escapism. It's just, in my opinion, it's it's the most acceptable form because you're not using anything outside the body to achieve it. You're you're just using the tools given to you. <coughs> Which makes me wonder, could I set up a video game within a meditation? I'd save a ton of money. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I'm not sure where the, where the mark is on this video. If we're two or past the 30 minute mark, like I said a minute ago. But I'm going to go ahead and call it. I like this video. And uh, if you like this video or, or have enjoyed it in any way, please click the like button. You can also favorite this video if you want to. But if you would like to keep coming back and getting information, or you just like the sound of my voice, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there.